theyeshiva.net. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, Bruchim Habayim. Thank you for joining us virtually. Today is Friday. Parshas Vayakal Pkude, Chav Dalad Adar Tovshin Pei, the 24th of Adar, 5780, March 20th, 2020. And I want to thank all of you for being here. We now have a special opportunity to ask questions. And I'm going to give you the number. You can just text your questions throughout the shear. Please text all of your questions to 845-777-4707. 845-777-4707. Please text all your questions there. Feel free to add your name. And Bli Neder, I will take breaks during the class to address your questions. Okay, one question came in already. <laughs> one question came in, so let me uh, let me take that, and then we'll uh, begin. Okay, everybody feel free to text in your questions. You can write your name there. 845-777-4707. All these questions come right to me, and I can address them. Be'ezer Hashem. So here's the question. Good morning. This is Sarah Malka. I'm on your Facebook broadcasts. My question concerns your discussion. At the end of yesterday's class, you were discussing the Kotzke Rebbe's comparisons of different stages of life to different animals. And he speaks about that the Medrash says in Kaihelas, in Ecclesiastes, that at some point when we get older, maybe the Zaydi age, the comparison was made to a monkey. A monkey compares a human, imitates a human being. And the Kotzke Rebbe said, because a person often gets older and starts imitating himself. He doesn't recreate himself. Character traits, behaviors were mentioned concerning the copying, imitating of oneself at that age. Character traits or behaviors that can be considered either positive, humility, or negative, anger at a person. So the question is, what's the question? Our Rebbe of blessed memory said that at the age of 60 is the age of sagacity. How do we reconcile the apparent differences? The age of, of, of 60 means the age of wisdom and, and perspective and mat- real maturity and so forth and experience. Okay, I'm not 60 yet, so I can't really speak from experience. I do know what somebody once told me, the difference between a 20-year-old and a 40-year-old and a 60-year-old. When you're 20, you're very self-conscious. Or at least you should be self-conscious. But 20-year-olds are self-conscious. What do I look like? What do they think of me? What group do I fit in? You know. When you're 40, you tell yourself, I don't care what they think. You could look at me this way. You could look at me that way. I got to be true to myself. This is who I am. You like me good. You don't like me. I don't care if you don't like me. This, finally, I'm going to embrace my identity and be true to myself, notwithstanding your opinions of me. When you reach 60, you realize nobody was ever looking at you. But I don't see a contradiction here. The concept is that with age, there's a element of wisdom and an element of of experience and an element of maturity. There's no wisdom like the experiences of life, like the trials and tribulations of life. And that's the sagacity. There's a, there's a wisdom, there's a perspective that comes with, eld, with, with, with older age. There's no question. The Kotzke Rebbe was bringing out that there's also a pitfall. And the pitfall, the stumbling block is that sometimes you just get, you get stuck. And instead of using your older years to to challenge yourself even more, the older years just become a uh, predictable, a predictable journey. And there's no uh, there's no freshness anymore. I'm just imitating what happened yesterday. Or if you want it to put it differently, there's a Mishnah Maseches Kinim. It's one of the tractates of Mishnah is Kinim in Kachim at the end. He says Zikrei Talmidei Chachamim. 
Which means there are elderly people, calls them Amayaritz, people who live in ignorance, and the older they get, the more confused they get. And then there's elderly who are called Tamidei Chachamim, true students of Torah, and the older they get, their das becomes more settled and, and more developed. You can text your questions, 845-777-4707. Let's continue. If you don't have the texts open, go to the yeshiva.net, the page on the banner, you'll see the class for 7 o'clock in the morning. Chassid is 7 o'clock in the morning. There's a source sheet over there and a PDF. We're up to page Kuf Samach Ches. Where are we holding? We're holding... One, two, three, one, two, three, four lines from the top. Vihine koiches and nefesh aboyim bislapshus beguf bechlal. After talking about the fact that the soul comes into the body and the soul becomes one with the body and the soul works through and in the body, the same is true in a person's service of Hashem, that the animal soul must become infused with the divine soul. The two become one. They work together in a complete symbiosis because the purpose is inner refinement that is internalized. So he says, The faculties of the soul that are manifested in and through the body generally are known as three dimensions, nefesh, ruach, and neshama. We'll explain what they are. The Medrash says that the soul has five names or five dimensions. The names are nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, and yechida. The acronym for them is naran, chay. Naran is nefesh, ruach, neshama, chay, chesiod is chaya, yechida. So he says, the faculties of the soul or the personality of the soul, which is manifested through the body, is usually the first three. Nef- nefesh ruach nesham. Shebehei madregis. The nefesh ruach nesham chayi yechida. Hinei chayi yechida he makif musha ben nesham she'ena mislap shem beguf. Uma shabayim beslap shem beguf is aurak ha-gimel madregis the nefesh ruach nesham. The dimensions called chayi yechida which we will explain, are the makifim of the soul. Makifim, we learned many times, makifim of the soul means they are a much more powerful electricity and energy of the soul that encompasses the person, but it's not often felt in a conscious, internalized way. That's why it's called an ur makif. There is an ur pnimi. An ur pnimi is a light that is manifested and enclosed in a vessel because the vessel can contain it. An ur makif is an ur that surrounds the keli, like in a peripheral fashion, which is only a physical metaphor, but don't understand this geographically or spatially, encompasses above means that the body can't always be a vessel to contain it and manifest it fully. So this is called makif from It's like a higher, more transcendent, more overwhelming energy of the soul, which is not manifested through the body. It's only nefesh ruach neshama, which is enclosed in the vessel of the physical organism, which we call the guf. Even in the revelation of the three dimensions, nefesh ruach neshama, yesh bazas seder vahadiragam al matalamayla. There's also an order from a lower space to a higher one. Milmata lamayla. The mitchila mezgala nefesh. Vachikach ruach, vachikach neshama. First, the body can experience the nefesh. Later, the body can experience a higher state of consciousness called ruach. And yet later, the body can experience yet a higher state of consciousness called neshama. The cane who be clolos avoid the kol hayoim shall be his galos gimel madregas the nefesh roch neshama. This is also reflected in the general work of a person throughout the day. Where it's not just in life, you have it in all of life. There's a stage of life which is more nefesh, 
and then Ruach, and then Neshama, but even every single day. There is a system, an order. The revelation of these three levels of Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, there's a Seder, there's a Hadraga, step after step. And this is reflected in the structure of davening. Shazel, Masha'ad Baruch Sha'amar, Hubebchines Haida'a, Haidu Lashem. The first section of davening is associated with nefesh. It's the first thing in the morning. Sun rises. A Jew davens or right before the sun rises. Depends if you daven terach's minyin, vasikin's minyin. I know some of you daven already. Some of you will daven later. But the davening is stages. The first stage of davening is, what's the first thing what Jew says when he wakes up in the morning? The first words, moida ani lefanach. Moida means, I thank you. Moida also means I submit or I confess or I acquiesce or I surrender. Like Amoida, Moidim Chachamim Lereb Meir, we learned many times. And then we start davening. And how does davening begin? At least according to Nusach Svart, according to Ashkenazi, do it a little later. It begins with the words, Haidu la Dainoi Kiru Bishmoi Haidiyo Vamim Alilaisav, which means Haidu la Shem. Give thanks to God, call out in his name, and notify, let it be known among all the nations, Ali Loisov, his great schemes and plans and strategies. Shiru Zamru Sichu, Bechol Neflaisov. You guys remember these words? <laughs> Sing to him. Yeah. Uh, play music to him. Speak about all of his wonders. His Hanalu B'Shem Kotshei. The heart of somebody who searches for God is happy. Beautiful words, very beautiful words. That's how we open up, we open up davening. But the first word, that's extremely significant. I had a classmate in yeshiva. He was, in Yiddish you would say, durch gewegt mit chsidus. He was saturated with, with chassidus. A very sensitive soul, very spiritual soul, like he got it. And we were once sitting at night in Beis Medrash in Yeshiva, schmoozing. I don't know, I think it was 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. And he said something. It left such an impression on me. He said, I can't wait till tomorrow morning. I said, what's happening tomorrow morning? You're winning the lottery? You're being expelled from yeshiva? What's happening tomorrow morning that you're so excited about? He said, I can't wait till tomorrow morning to be able to say, It was such a rich experience of Yiddishkeit. Such a rich uh, experience of a relationship. It starts, what's haidu? So he says, Ad Baruch Sha'amar Hubabchinas Haida. Till you reach Baruch Sha'amar, you're still in a state of Haida. Haida means I'm to you. I surrender my opinion to your opinion. Two people have an argument, and you say, The Chachamim, I'm to the mayor. I submit. I surrender. Haidu Lasha. That's the first stage of davening. Parallels, Nefesh. Achakach, Psukid Zimra. Then, Baruch Sha'amar Vahaya Eilam, now is a new stage of davening. It's related to Ruach. And then you have the blessings of Shema after Baruch, and you have Shemina Esra. Shazel biz galos an nefesh, the gimel madregas, the nefesh ruach nasham. This structure of davening is reflecting the revelation of the three dimensions of the soul in an order, stage after stage. Nefesh, hoidu lashem, moida ani. Then there's Ruach, and then there's Nesham. We're going to explain. This is every day. But it's also true throughout a person's life. In a person's spiritual and psychological work, there must be a Seder, an order, and Hadraga. Hadraga comes from the word Madrega, which means step. A person must not run above his or her level, what you call it's above my pay grade. And he adds 
extraordinary words. She'ein tzarech lirtzois ba'amadrega ha'alyayna ba'oitshu shayech la'amadrega ha'tachtayna. A person should not want to touch the higher level when he's still in the lower level. Because all it will do is frustrate him and confuse him. You have to be able to embrace where you are at every moment and understand that this journey is essential to your growth. Because if you want to be somewhere else, when you're here, you're not there and you're not here. And he doesn't mean a person should not be striving and constantly challenging himself. Of course, life is about growth. But the point is, there's an expression, don't grab angels. You see, many people, they're not honest about where they are. They read about high levels, and yeah, I already am there, I'm there, I close my eyes, and I feel that I'm there. So they're not there, and they're not here. They're not here because they don't acknowledge that they're here, so they can't be here. And they're not there because they're not honestly there. <laughs> they just want to delude themselves. So the Rebbe is telling us here, embrace the fact that there's a seder hadraga in life, and that's what's called a real person, a pnimi. A pnimi, there's a famous, the Rebbe, the Rebbe Rashab would often speak about a pnimi versus a chitzen. A chitzen is somebody who's an external person. A pnimi is somebody who's an internalized person. He used to say in Yiddish, Vu it is, is there in Gansen. Wherever he is, he's there wholesomely. He's there completely. He says, you shouldn't want a higher madrega. Learn from people, but don't emulate people. You have to really be able to be very honest and at peace with where you are right now, because this is where truth is, and this is where God is, and this is where you're going to touch the divine. Tomorrow, go up another step in the ladder. But today, this is the place. And he puts it, When I'm still, when I still belong to a Madrega Tachtayna, I don't want to want the Madrega Halyayna. It's not healthy for me. It's not productive for me. It's not meaningful for me. You know, the two-year-old child wants to be a 20-year-old. No. When you're a 20-year-old, be a 20-year-old. And when you're a two-year-old, be a two-year-old fully. Because it's only by being a two-year-old that you can become a 20-year-old. That's why those of us who were never two are having a problem being 20 or being 40. <laughs> you have to be two in order to get to 20. You can't skip a couple of years. It's like in a ladder. So if I always, I, I want to hire my degree, he says, you're making a mistake. You're not really going to get anywhere. It's not going to be an internalized, an internalized journey. <clears throat> There's a beautiful story about the Balatanya that illustrates this, I think. <clears throat> Many of you go to shul Friday night, or at least you usually go to shul on Friday night. May we all soon, very soon, be able to return to shul Friday night. And you know, there's a highlight after Hashkivenu, before Shmei Nasra, Vishameru b'nei Yisroel es ha-shabos l'doyro yisomer yisroelom o'yiki etc. That those few verses from Parshas Kisisa, Vishamru, Vene Yisrael, as Hashabos, followed by the Kaddish and the Shemayin Asra. On Yom Tif, different verses are recited after Ashkivenu in connection to that Yom Tif. By Dabur Hashem, Ismoyadei Hashem, El Bnei Yisrael, etc. Every night, or at least many nights, there's also in the middle of the week, Baruch Hashem lo'elam amen v'amen. Now, this insertion in davening is, how do we say, somewhat controversial or problematic. The Vilna Gon, for example, held that it doesn't belong there <clears throat> because the Gemara says you have to go from Gal Yisrael straight to Tfilah. Gu'ula Tfilah, Gal Yisrael. The Gemara says, what about Hashkivenu? He says, since the Anshei Kresas Agdala inserted the bracha there, it's... It's Ketfil Arich, that's an extension of Gal Yisrael, but how can you add anything else and interrupt between Gal Yisrael, Ashkevein, Ashmen The Balatanya also took it out of his Siddur. According to the Nusach of the Arizal, the Balatanya, his Nusach Atfila, 
after Hashkivenu, you go straight to Kaddish, Shabbos, Yom Tif, and all days of the week. Yet, interestingly, he put Vishamru into his Siddur. In any Chabad Siddur, which was authored by the Balatanya, he wrote a whole Nusach of Davening with Nekudas, already in his lifetime. He, he wrote a Nusach of Davening. He used 60, 60 texts, 60 versions were in front of him. And then he wrote a Nusach, which is primarily based on Sfarad and Ariza, but he really felt he wanted to perfect the Nusach. It should be perfect uh, according to Hebrew grammar and also according to Kabbalah. He left Vishamru there, but it's not said. He just says those who have a minute to say it, this is where they should say it, and they have what to rely on. But in the Nusach of the Tefillah that Alter Rebbe instituted, you don't say it, even though he put it in the Siddur. So there's a story that once Rebbe Levi Yitzchak of Bardichev, who was a, a Kedosh Elyon, a saintly man and a lover of the Jewish people. And Rebbe Levi Yitzchak of Bardichev was together with the Maltanya. They were marrying off, they married off grandchildren with each, to each other. Tovkov Samach Zayin, 17... 17, 1807, Parshas Nasai, in June, in Sivan, in a place called Zlobin, there was a big wedding of a grandchild of the Balatani grandchild of Lysik Badichev. So they were together a whole a few days. There's a lot of Maimorim. One of the first Maimorim we learned in our morning class was Ketzad Mirak de Lifne Hakali. Remember? Lukutet Torah Shashidim Beis Shammai Beis Hillel. That was said at the wedding, at the Zlobin Chasana. With with Levitzik Badichev's grandchild, grandson married the Balatanya's granddaughter. The story is that the Levitzik of Badichev asked the Alter Rebbe, "How could you not save Veshamru Friday night?" And he's used these words: "As Yidin Zogin Veshamru, Vet Ayirid in Himmel." When Jewish people say Veshamru, there is a Yirid in heaven. You know what a Yirid is? A Yirid was the term always used for a marketplace. You know how people will go today to jewelry shows or clothes shows, different shows where all the vendors display their new creations and anyone who's doing business in this field makes sure to go to the show. A Yirid is like a big marketplace. All the vendors come and all the clients come and all the customers come. Basically, that's the place to be. That's where the action is. So he says that when Jews say Vishamru, Vert Ayirid in Himmel, there's a big marketplace in heaven. How could you not say Vishamru? And the Balatanya responded and said, Nisht af yede Yirid dafich zayn. I don't have to be at every Yirid. A Yirid it is, but I don't have to be at every Yirid. It's a very deep story. Because some people feel, I have to be at every Yirid. If there's a Yirid, I have to be there. But mitzad the seder ha'avoda of a pnimi, of the pnimius, and mitzad the seder ha'avoda of a pnimi. I don't have to be at every yirid. I have to be real, real where I am, and then I could go. I can go to the next step. Questions, okay. Please text your questions to 845-777-4707. This is true in every person's life, every day, stages in davening, and throughout life, stages in life. But it's also true, generally, about different souls. Yesh neshamas ha-shayachim l'nefesh, yesh neshamas ha-shayachim l'ruach, yesh neshamas ha-shayachim l'neshama. There are souls that are more nefesh-oriented, more ruach-oriented, more neshama-oriented. And based on what type of nefesh is primarily manifested in your life, whether it's more nefesh or ruach or neshama, that's the way in which your animal soul is also refined and uplifted and transformed and elevated. In other words, the way the nefesh comes out of the nefesh alakis, if that's the primary avoda, 
It affects the animal soul in one way, the ruach in a different way, neshama in a different way, as will be explained. So there, there is real diversity here. Every soul has all the five, nefesh, shok, neshama, chai, yechid. The first three are manifested in and through the body, but there's, you know, there's people who are very practical people, there's people who are more artistic people. There's so many different types of people. Which part of your soul you're more in touch with is more manifested in a conscious way. You're a nefesh person, you're a ruach person, you're a neshama person. In all of us, it's also stages throughout our life. There's the stage of nefesh, the stage of ruach, stage of neshama. And every day there is nefesh, ruach, neshama. What does this mean? What is this nefesh, ruach, neshama? So v'hinei nefesh, says the Rebbe, v'hinei nefesh, hu askamas halev lelech b'derech toiv v'malachri eches asmei b'sur meirav asei toiv. When we speak about nefesh, you have nefesh roch nesham in the animal soul, you have it in the godly soul. Here he's talking in the godly soul. What is the avayda of nefesh? Nefesh is the agreement of the heart to go in the good path and to compel oneself. Lachriyach <clears throat> means I compel myself to stay away from toxicity and to engage in goodness and wholeness. In the spheroids, every soul consists of ten faculties. Right? There's Keser, Chachma, Bina, Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hoid, Yisoid, Malchus. When you count Keser, you don't count Das. You can also sometimes do Chachma, Bina, Das, Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hoid, Yisoid, Malchus. Nefesh represents Netzach, Hoid, Yisoid. Netzach Hayd Yisoid is associated with the lower part of the body. The right thigh is Netzach, the left thigh is Hayd, and the bris is Yisoid. The procreative organs are called Yisoid. Chachma bin Adas, of course, relates to the brain, to the cognitive consciousness of a person. And Chesed Gvura Teferis relates Chesed as the right arm, Gvura is the left arm, Teferis is the torso. So Nefesh is associated with the lower three, Netzach, Hayd, and Yisoid. The word netzach comes from victory. Nitzachon, didan notzach, like to win, right? Lenatzeach. He says netzach is the heart agrees to follow a good path to stay away from brokenness, from toxicity, and engage in wholeness. Shebazeh netzach lo yeshum gilu v'chayis alaki. This netzach does not necessarily have any revelation of godliness or a vitality of godliness Translate. Don't confuse my netzach that we're the netzach we're talking about with a different type of netzach. There's two types of netzach. <clears throat> there is a netzach, he says, that follows a passionate davening. During the time of davening, if a Jew truly davens and finds his or her intimate and inner relationship with their inner soul and with God. And there's a certain experience of ava, of love and passion. You experience godliness. There's the, a Jew is divine and you can consciously have some experience of it. And that's the ultimate focus and function of davening. But a person finishes davening. And it's very difficult to sustain that level of passion all day. So this is what netzach is. Netzach is the commitment that the whole day is going to be guided by my experience of davening. We all know in life, sometimes I experience something in a very real way. It's clear, and I'm very passionate about it. 
In an hour, it may be gone. In a day, it will for sure be gone. In a week, it's a distant memory. But it's enough to create such a powerful awareness that I could follow that throughout the coming day or throughout the coming week or throughout the coming month, even though I'm not exactly feeling that experience. I'm not always capable of being in tune with my deepest values, but there are moments that I am in tune with my deepest values. There's moments that I feel what I really love. I know what I really love, and I even feel what I really love. And then based on that, I make commitments, even when I'm not in the mood. That's called Netzach. This is the Netzach, which is a branch of Chesed. The spheroids are divided into three columns. The right column is Chachma, Chesed, and Netzach. The left column is Bina, Gvura, and Hoyt. The middle column is Das, Tiferes, and Yesoit. So Chesed is on the right column, and Chesed and Netzach is under that column. Because this Netzach is a branch. It's a, it's a derivative of Chesed. Chesed represents a passionate love. But even when that passionate love is gone, there is still the Netzach. The Netzach is, I tell myself, I, form, I, I force myself to fight for something. Netzach is the victory. I'm ready to fight for it. And ready to fight for it means, even if it's difficult, because I'm not so passionate about it, but it's clear by me that four hours ago I was very passionate about it. I know where reality is. I know where my soul really is. So now I'm having temptations, or now I'm in a different place, but I can rely on that passion to be able to carry me through. That's one level of Netzach. But he says that Netzach still has, it has light in it because it still has the impact of the davening. There is still a bisala oid, there's a little inspiration there. In other words, it's not that you're really forcing yourself or compelling yourself. You want it, you want it. You're still feeling a little bit, but the desire is not as strong, so therefore you say, netzach, I'm going to fight for it. He says, the netzach we're talking here is a very different netzach. There's actually no feeling. The message is, your body is telling you is that you don't want this, but you know, you know that the truth is, that you know that this is your truth, even though you're not having any emotional sensation. In other words, there's a netzach that still has a little bit of the inspiration there, maybe more hidden, but there's still abyssal sebrentnach. You know, you have a big fire and then you, you, uh, you extinguish the flames, but there's still embers, there's embers burning. You could still feel something. That's one netzach. That's the netzach that comes from chesed. But then there's a much more uh, demanding netzach. I really have to fight against what my own sensations and emotions are telling me. You're not interested. You know, I'm in, I'm in a powerful place by davening, a place of enlightenment, a place of clarity. Yeah? But six hours later, I'm hungry. I'm in a bad mood. I'm stressed. I'm not feeling anything. I'm derailed. And suddenly I see this huge pastrami sandwich, uh, which is not, <laughs> or some other sandwiches or some other food, which is really not good for me. There's a part of me that wants to go there. I'm bored or I'm stressed, or I just need some entertainment, or I just need some distractions from my void. And this is where you need netzach. Netzach means I may not be able to recreate my passion. Probably not. I may not even be able to become deeply aware, emotionally aware of my truest values. And I may tell myself, I am not that person. I am just a beast and I like to binge. And this is where Midas HaNetzach comes in. You have to fight. Who do you have to fight? You have to fight that part of yourself which denies the inner truth of you that you cannot feel at that moment. Vahoyt. Then you have hoid. What's hoid? Zehom HaShemoyd Ala Emes. Hoid is the quality that I can acknowledge truth and surrender to truth. Moyd Ala Emes, we say every morning, L'Oilam Yei Adam Yei Shemayim Baseser U Moyd Ala Emes. I should be moyd to truth. I could say I'm sorry, I can apologize, I could submit my opinion when I hear truth, I don't remain stuck. K'moy, as we say in Davening, Moydim Anach Nolach Sha'atuhu Hashem Alekeinu. Moydim Anach Nolach doesn't only mean we thank you, because then it's very wordy. Moydim Anach Nolach, we thank you. You know why? Sha'atuhu Hashem Alekeinu, because you are God, our God, etc. Moydim Anach Nolach also comes from the word 
Hai da. I'm moida to you. Why am I moida to you? Because I have a different opinion. Despite the fact that I have a different opinion and I argued with you throughout, but now I come and I'm moida. This can be in one of two ways. There's two types of being moida, of, of submitting, of surrendering my view to your view. One is, I know that what you're saying is right, but I don't know how it's right. How it's right and what exactly it is. Another way of moida is, I don't even know <laughs> that it's so. I don't even know. But I'm moida that this is the truth. <laughs> what I'm moida is, yeah, that the truth is not by me. That's what I'm moida. So there's two types of moida. One is, I, I, know, I, I know that this is the truth. I know, I, know, <laughs> I know it's the truth. That's already a higher level. Why is it called being moida? Because... I still don't know echu, mahu, how it is, what it is. But I just know you're saying the truth. Sometimes somebody tells you something, challenges maybe every conviction you had or every thought process you had. Or, you know, people think about their lives in certain ways, their marriages in certain ways, who they are in certain ways. And then somebody, you know, throws something in, into your soul. And you right away know you have to be moida. If you're not stuck and you're not blind and you're not too arrogant, and you're not too damaged and traumatized, and you always have a soul that's not traumatized, you, you're moida. You just know it's true. You may not know how. You may not know why. You may not know exactly even what, but you know it's true. You sense that this is true. Sometimes the haida is, you don't even know that it's this way. But you're moida that there's truth here. Very subtle. So, <laughs> I love these words. <laughs> he doesn't even know that this is the case. So, because that's the idea of moida. Moida means it's not my view. I'm being moida to you. That's what haida means. It's not my view. I'm being moida. But what does it mean? I'm being moida. I know that this is the case. But I still don't know how and what. But I'm but I know this is true. And sometimes I don't even know that this is the case. But I'm moida that this is truth. So let me give what I think the, the Rebbe is saying here. You tell me something. I don't know this. I never understood it this way. But I'm 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 moida that this is the truth. Netzach and Hoid are the, so to speak, the last or lowest dimension of the Nefesh. They are essential to life. Life for it to be a life worth living, you must have Netzach and you must have Hoid. What's Netzach? Remember, what's Netzach? Victory. It's the ability to fight for a truth even when I'm completely not feeling it at all. But there is a conviction that I have and that conviction could carry me through. That's called a heskim. You make an agreement. Why do you make an agreement? An agreement is not for now. Now I want the agreement. The agreement is for tomorrow or for a week. We sign an agreement. Netzach is I make an agreement. And the agreement is, this is what's going to be even when I'm not in tuned. And then there's hoid. And hoid is the ability to acknowledge truth when I see it. Even if, again, I can't fully identify with it. Those are two essential qualities of life. And they represent a lower level of the soul because there's no full integration. Shalachena merazal, that's where the Gemara says, Mandalay karabim moidim nasir shidrasay nachash. Somebody who doesn't bow down by Maidim, his spine turns into a snake. What does this mean? 
she'en bo'itoiv klal. This represents the original nachash, the original snake, which doesn't have goodness and wholeness. What is the Rebbe saying here? The last step before turning into a nachash is moidim anachnoluch. A person needs at least the moidim. At least the moidim. If you're missing even the moidim, then the person can be overtaken by the nachash akadmaini, by the primordial snake, by the by the snake of the uh, that we speak about in the genesis of history. I have to have at least moidim. What is moidim? Moidim doesn't mean that I can always identify emotionally and embrace a certain value system with passion. As we said, that's a higher level of consciousness. Netzach and Haid is a lower level of consciousness. It's a more primitive state of consciousness. But without that, you can't live a wholesome life. Because these are the qualities that guarantee your morality, your survival, your living a healthy life, your being in touch with who you really are, which means with God. So without that, life is dangerous if you don't have netzach and hayt. And that's what the Gemara says. If I can't kneel by moidim, if I can't bow down by moidim, if I, I don't at least have the moidim, the next step is nachash, I fall prey. What is moidim? Moidim doesn't mean I emotionally identify, but moidim means I have the ability to be moidim. Moida means it's not my view. I know it's not my view. I'm, if it's my view, I'm not Moida. It's my view. Moida is I'm being Moida to you. We're having an argument. And yet I have the ability to be Moida. What's the argument here? Spiritually, in my soul, there's a lot of different voices, a lot of arguments. But the fact that I know something is true, that's enough. I'm Moida to it. I'm Moida. There's different levels of Moida, as he said. Sometimes... I, I know that it's true. I just don't know how and what, so it's easier to embrace. Sometimes I don't even know it's true. But I know that it's truth. <laughs> I'm moida that it's truth. I'm moida. How, how, what does it mean, I'm moida that it's truth? It is. There's a certain inner sense. I can't say that I got it. But there's a certain inner sense that this is the MS, or at least I know that the MS is not by me. So that is hide in a person's life. Somebody asked a question here. How do I know which you need to attend? Welcome, Mati. That's a wonderful question. How do you know which you need to attend? <clears throat> to so many beautiful marketplaces. How do you know which you need to attend? I would love to hear what the Chavres say about this, but I can't hear what you're saying. Maybe you'll text in your answers to this 845777. 4707 eight, eight, four, five, seven, 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 4707 write down this number because for the future classes you can always text your questions comments and feedback to this number i have to think how about how to answer your question because it's a very very important question in life i'm just going to say a few things that come to mind as i read your question reb mardechai or reb moti I think there's a few qualifications. I think there's a few qualifications, at least, and at least this is part of the answer. I don't know if it's the whole answer. It's not, obviously, but at least it's part of the answer. You want to be at a Yurid where you can realize your full potential, a place where your full light and glory can be actualized. A Yurid that embraces you it helps you embrace you and it helps to bring out the best in you that's the type of idiot you want to be you want to be in, in 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 a place that that truly brings out the best the best in you without compromises what do they say a poet once said most people live lives of quiet desperation you don't want you don't want to be in that place. Number one, you want to be in a place in a yirid where you could be fully honest with yourself and with others, really, really honest. That's the yirid you want to be. You know, there's a yirid that you could be extremely honest with yourself. 
and honest with other people, very honest, brutally honest, naked. The ability to be able to remove your garments, I mean, spiritually speaking, and be fully, fully open. You want to be in a Yerid that resonates with you. It resonates with you that you know this is a place of emes, a place of, of real, real truth. So you could put yourself into it with your heart and with your soul and with your full energy and with your full passion. You want to be in a Yerid that you can trust. <laughs> you can trust. You can trust the vendors. You can trust the clients. You want to be in a Yerid that respects where you are and yet helps you challenge yourself to go to the next step. And finally, you want to be in a Yerid where you don't have to amputate any part of yourself. You don't have to become mutilated emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. All the parts of your life have a place there, have a space there, a welcome there. And you want to have a Yerid where your your soul could go could be on fire. Different levels of fires. We spoke about Netzach and Hoid. It's not always on fire. But <clears throat> where, where you feel this is the place that if your soul is ever on fire, this is where it could be on fire. So I don't know if I really answered your question. I just made your question a little more complicated. But I think these are some thoughts to ponder. <clears throat> okay, Chavra, we're going to take a break here. And I want to wish you all my love and blessings. Stay healthy. A lichtige Shabbos, a gesunde Shabbos, a freilige Shabbos. <clears throat> May you have an inspirational and meaningful quarantine Shabbos. I said last night in the Shir that Moshe Rabbeinu told the Jewish people before Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, Va'atem lo'iseitzu ish me Pesach boise ad boiker. Don't leave the door of your home until morning. Don't leave the door of your home until a new dawn descends upon our planet and the coronavirus is curtailed. And when you remain in the door of your home, it can be a curse or a blessing. It depends how you see it. You can see it as moments of loneliness and solitariness. You're stuck. That's one form of remaining home. But there's another way, and that's Moshe Rabbeinu's menu or blueprint. He says, if you'll stay in the home, and you'll eat matzah, and you'll eat marah, and you'll eat the carbon Pesach, and you'll speak to your child, and you're going to have a chabura, and you'll dedicate this time to connection and relationship and intimacy and healing past wounds and allowing this functionality to be examined and healed and really bringing a family together, then being in that home is the basis of redemption. On the contrary, if I leave the door, if I open the door and I go out, Moshe says, you have to know you have blood on your door. The door that opened up and allowed a virus to spread, even if it was unintentional, you may have blood on that door. So I say to you, stay healthy, have a beautiful and meaningful Shabbos. It's going to be a very different Shabbos for many people. But... Whatever the Shabbos is, is an opportunity. This is how God wants us to celebrate the Shabbos. We celebrate it with tremendous passion and dignity and joy, even if our plans have been redefined. And may all of you stay healthy and have a beautiful Shabbos. May God bring a complete and speedy recovery to all those who need it, Jews, non-Jews, our world, our planet. And may the new dawn that descends upon our world and allows us to open our doors and emerge, oh, also be a dawn that brings a new exodus, a new geula. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful Shabbos and a wonderful Shabbos. Thank you for joining us. <coughs> this year, 7 o'clock, will resume Bezer Hashem on Monday morning. Okay, please, Monday morning. Sunday, we will have a 4 p.m. children's program. Yesterday, on Thursday, we had a children's program at 4 live on the yeshiva.net 
I thought it was fabulous because a lot of children texted in questions and it was incredible to hear their questions. I would actually encourage you to watch or listen to the program on the yeshiva.net, a children's program. It's called Time for Hope. And yesterday, yesterday in the afternoon, and uh, I think we had 45 minutes or an hour of, of children's questions or so. Fascinating, fascinating. It's important to hear what's on the minds of children. A five-year-old was texting questions. A six-year-old was texting questions. Fascinating questions about the corona and about other topics in life. You know, sometimes you see from these questions where so many children are at, and it's very uh, educationally powerful. Um, a few people answered Mati's question about the Yirid. So before we go, let me just read them. In response to the Yirid, you said this many times. It boils down to honesty within oneself. Often a question that helps me to get honest is, what do I benefit by hanging on to this? What do I need to give up to let go of this? This often being a non-truth. That's a very beautiful response. So this person is saying, I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, thank you. It boils down to being very honest with yourself. So this person asks themselves a question, you know, what do I benefit by hanging on to this, to this institution, to this person, to this concept, to this concept within me? What do I need to give up to let go of this? In other words, what am I really gaining? What is this giving me? What is this Yirid giving me? What is it? Social acceptance, shidduchim for my children. It's just very important to be honest with yourself. What am I benefiting? You know, we all hold on to things. Social conformity, certain habits, certain addictions, inside and outside. We hold on to it. What am I getting from it? And what do I need to give up to let go of this? Why am I scared to let go of this? Beautiful. Somebody else says... I liked what your answer, but let me tell you my experience. And that is, I see it in the negative, meaning I don't have to run to every Yerid. I don't have to be a Nash. I don't have to be a Nasher. You know, there's a smorgasbord. You know, the people that go to every one. I also walk around the smorgasbord. I like to see it, but I have to Nash from every single one. And it doesn't mean there's no good food at the other table. There may be wonderful, wonderful things, but I don't have to be there. I really don't have to be there. That very consciousness that I don't have to be everywhere will ultimately allow me to know where I have to be. That's a beautiful answer. In other words, becoming, becoming at peace, embracing the fact that I don't have to be at every year. I don't have to nash from every delicious piece of food. Not because the food is not good. There may be wonderful, wonderful things that work for many, many people and are excellent and beautiful and wonderful. But I don't have to be at every Yerid. And I could really embrace that. I can breathe into that. I don't have to be there. That itself is so liberating and emancipating that with time I'll already know where my Yerid is. The problem is when I feel that I have to nash from everywhere, I can't be anywhere. I'm at every Yerid, but I'm really nowhere. This comes from Rebbe Zriel Engel. Thank you, Rebbe Zriel. Thank you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbos. We're going to take now a two-minute break, not more, and begin the Gemara. Bye-bye. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.